Let's look at placing a pole exactly somewhere in the plane. So here we have a transfer function, 10 over tau 1s plus 1 times tau 2s plus 1. And we've got some values, tau 1 equals to 1, tau 2 equals to 200. And so the question is, in this specific case, I'd like to find some compensator k of s, such that zeta is greater than or equal to 0 0.5 and omega n is greater than 2 radians per second. So we showed in class and in some previous examples that if you want to use lead compensation, if you want to meet these design constraints, then you choose a zero near the omega endpoint. So here that's at right around minus two. And then you choose a pole that's about three to time, three to twenty times the zero's value. So that's going to be somewhere between minus six uh, and minus forty. That's where the, the pole's gonna or the zeros sorry, <laughs> where the pole's gonna be. Um, and so if you do this, now you've got some compensator k of s equals k times s plus 2 over s plus 10. So we're going to choose a value k in order to be somewhere on that root locus. And so you know, we use the, the rule of thumb for lead compensation in order to do that. But we could also say, yeah, so the rule of thumb is uh, piece A, so there we'll basically end up with some design that we can change k and approximate where we'd like to be on that curve. We can also use exact placement. So let's say we'd like to have the closed loop poles be at some minus zeta omega n plus or minus j omega d. So in order to do this, let's say that somebody says, aha, I'd like to have omega n be about equal to 2 and zeta be about equal to 0.5. So in that case, I'm going to get the real part is going to be minus 1. And the imaginary part is going to be based on my damping coefficient zeta. So the omega d is equal to omega n times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. So that ends up being about minus 1 plus or minus j square root of 3 is where I'm going to want my poles to be. So with this in mind, I now know where I want my closed loop pole to actually be. So let's look at the existing poles that we have. So we have poles at about the origin, but not quite, so at minus 1 over 200, and then another pole at minus 1. So by changing the gain k, we're going to be putting our poles somewhere else. Uh, and so as we do this, we're going to find a point that's on the root locus. And so for this point to be on the root locus, we're going to measure from the pole in the zero that we choose. So the zero that we choose will be here, and the pole that we'll choose will be here. And then depending on the gain, these two zeros, or these two poles will come together and then split off like this, sort of like we saw before. And so we're going to pick a gain such that we find ourselves here at this pole. But we're also going to be picking values for the, two, for the zero here and for the pole here so that we can get an exact placement. So if we use the rule of thumb, we get a root locus that comes out of it. But then we choose a gain k that will be somewhere on that root locus. It might not be exactly where we want it to be. In this particular case, we'll be able to put the pole exactly where we want by choosing the pole and the zero. So I've labeled all the angles here, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so we know that these are that we're going to have the, the pole value at minus 1 plus or minus j squared of 3. And so we know how we can measure from the existing poles and zeros. So the existing zero uh, is the angle 1, and the existing poles are angles 2 and 3. And then angle 4 is some other pole value. So again, we're creating a compensator s plus z for this, for this 0 over s plus p for this pole. And so that's going to give us the angles for 1 and 4. But the angles for 3 and 2 we can go ahead and calculate. So the angle 2 is 90 degrees plus the arc tan of 1 over the square root of 3, so that's about 120 degrees. And we know that's the arc tan of the square root of 1 over 3 because This is the opposite, and this is the adjacent of this angle here. And so we divide opposite by adjacent and take the arctan, 
and of course the height is the square root of 3. So that gives us 120 degrees. Angle 3 is equal to 90 degrees by observation. And so we know that angle 1 minus angle 2 minus angle 3 minus angle 4 must be equal to plus or minus 180. So therefore we have now basically a parametric equation. Minus 1 minus angle 4. Angle 1 minus angle 4 is equal to 30. And so we have two variables but only one equation. And so we're going to pick a value for the angle of 1. Basically we'll be picking the 0. So if we choose uh, the 0 to be at minus 2 then we're going to receive a new pole value. So if we choose that to be minus 2 then the angle 1 is going to be 60 degrees. And if the angle 1 is 60 degrees, then the angle 4 will be 30 degrees. And so if the angle 4 is 30 degrees, we can go ahead and calculate the square root of 3 over x is equal to 30. Therefore, we take the arc 10. So we can calculate that x is going to be equal to 3. And so p1 is going to be equal to minus 4, because we need to be 3 to the left of the minus 1 part of the real part of the pole. So this gives us the pole and the zero value for our compensator K of S. Now again, this is not exactly the same kind of design we did on the previous example. Uh, when we used, the, uh, when we used the, the rule of thumb, we chose the pole to just be bigger than the zero, but the resulting root locus that we got doesn't necessarily pass through this point. If we want to pass exactly through that point, then we can use this method to pick our zero and our pole.